Hello, this is Amit, and today I will show you how to get your own email server running for $5 a month. Yes, for $5 a month, you can run your own email server, be it for your small business that you are starting up or for your own learning experience. It could be a good experience to be able to build and run your own email server, and it's cool too. Let's go ahead and get started. In order to run your own mail server, you will need two things, a domain name and a server. Let's first talk about the domain name. If you do not already have a domain name, you can register a domain name with any domain registrars like GoDaddy or Namecheap. But if you decide to go with Namecheap, I have my referral link below in the description and you can register a domain for $8.88 per year at the time of recording this video. The next thing you need is a server. You can rent a server from any provider, but for this video, I'm going with DigitalOcean because I know you can rent a server for $5 a month with DigitalOcean. If you decide to go with DigitalOcean, you can use my referral link in the description below and get a $100 credit for two months for free, at least at the time of recording this video. Once you have your domain name, the next step is to create a server on the DigitalOcean. If you already have a server, you can skip this and continue once we are logged into the server. But if you don't have the server, let's head to the DigitalOcean control panel to create a new server and get started. In the DigitalOcean panel here, you can select the Create option and then select Droplet. Once you select the Create Droplet option, you are presented with multiple options here. The first option is to choose an image. By default, Ubuntu is selected. I like to go with CentOS, CentOS 7.5 and 64-bit. The next step is to choose a size. You can see here, the, by default, a $40 per month server is selected. That's not what we want. Let's click on the left arrow. And this is the server we want, $5 per month, one gig of RAM, 25 gig of solid state drive, one gig of, t 1000 gig of data transfer, and one CPU. The next option is to add backups. This is up to you. It adds an additional dollar a month cost to your server. The other option is to choose a data center reason. You can choose any data center, but I would choose the one that's closest to me. The other option is a couple of different additional options. Private networking, I like to enable this just in case I have other servers and want to do something over private network. IPv6, don't care so much, user data, I don't use this. You can use it if you wanted to run cloud in it to configure a droplet. The other option is monitoring. The next step is adding your SSH keys. You can create new SSH key and log in using the keys, or if you have a predefined key, just like I do here, you select that key. If you don't have a key set up, then you will get your root e password over email. I highly recommend that you change password and delete that email. The last option here is to select the host name. Since we're going to build a mail server, it's a good idea to put a fully qualified domain name into the host name, like say mail.tripava.com, because tripava.com is a domain that go I'm going to use for this example. This way, it will also create a reverse DNS entry for this server. I will leave it to the default name so that I can show you how to fix that later on on the server. And now here at the bottom, we can confirm the selection, sent to us 7 0.5, 64-bit, $5 per month, the key, the data center. Now let's go ahead and click Create. It takes a couple seconds for the droplet to be created. Okay, the server is now created. We can just go ahead and copy this IP address and connect with any SSH client that you use. I use PuTTY and I authenticated with the public key here. Okay, once we are in here, let's go to the USR local SRC. That's where I like to pull down any source files that I use. For this example, to build a mail server, we are going to use a package called iRedMail. This is the iRedMail.org. Let's go in here, iRedMail.org. You can read about iRedMail if you would like. Let's go ahead and select the Download Now option. See, let's right-click and copy link address for the 
latest stable release, wget that packets, wget not found. These, these dilution droplets are minimal installations, so don't necessarily have all the packages. Let's go ahead and install the wget. Wget installed almost. Now let's get the packages. We can see that as we have the package. Let's go ahead and extract it. You can see that this package is a BZ2 compressed tar. So in order to extract that, we need to use tar minus JXVF. J and X are the most important ones. Um, so you can see it says BZIP2 cannot exact no such file or directory. We need to install BZIP2. Yum install. Yum install BZIP2. Good. Now we can see. Oh, we haven't extracted it yet, have we? Let's go ahead and extract it now. Okay. Now we can see that there is this folder. Let's go ahead and get into that. Let me do a long listing again. And if you notice here, there's a iredmail.asset script. That's all you need to run for this installation. It'll do all the configuration, download all the files that are needed, and will present you with a wizard that you can use to select what features you want on this mail server. So let's go ahead and run that sh I read mail dot I read mail dot sh Okay, it's doing its thing, downloading and installing a bunch of packages. Okay, to the next error. Now it says, error, please configure a fully qualified domain name FQDN in Etsy host before we go further. It's that host name setting that I was talking about. It wants you to set up the FQDN. This is the host name, this is the subdomain, this is the top level domain or the root domain. So that's what the FQDN is comprised of. If we look at the host name, we can see that hostname minus F will print the fully qualified domain name. You can see this is not a fully qualified domain name. We will go ahead and update the host file with the FQDN that we are going to use, mail.tripaba.com, mail, localhost. We're also going to update the Etsy host name with the short name of this host mail. Now we can go ahead and run host name minus B minus F Etsy host name. Now if we do a host name minus F, it should print mail.tripava.com like so. Now we should be ready to move ahead with the installation. And let's hope we don't encounter any other issues. Okay, there you go. That's the wizard I was talking about. So you just follow this wizard and get your mail server configured. Yes, we want to move forward. This is the directory used to store user mailboxes. For this simple example, we're just going to leave it at default. That's var vmail. It's asking us which web server you want to run, either Nginx or no web server. We are going to choose Nginx. This is going to host the admin panel and the webmail. It asks us to choose the backend. We will use the MariaDB. Specify the password for MySQL administrator root on server. Let's go ahead and select one. Do that. Let's go ahead and this is the specify your first mail domain and the it cannot be the same as the server host name mail.tripaba.com. That's not our domain. We are going to use tripaba.com as our first domain. 
Now, it's asking for the postmaster at tipaba.com's password. This is basically like your domain administrator or even the, you know, administrator account for the entire mail server. So be careful to set a strong password. Now, this is the option where you can select multiple options um, here, what components you want with your mail server. Roundkey Mail, it's the webmail client. There are other options, but we'll go with this. I mean, other options, meaning you can install third-party webmail packages after the installation is complete. Sogo is the webmail calendar and address book. We are not using that for this example. And this is a very, you know, small size server, so we want to install its less components as we can. I read admin, that's the web-based admin panel. We want that. Filter ban kind of helps you secure a server to some extent, so we'll enable that. It'll ban IPs with too many password failures or, you know, SSH failures and things like that, so that's helpful. Now it is just confirming all the details that we selected. We're going to say yes and let it run. While this is going on, we can go ahead and work on our DNS setting. This domain here, the tripaba.com, is the domain that I'm going to use for this example, and this is the control panel, DNS control panel, if you went with Namecheap. If you did go with other providers, it should be similar, if not exactly the same. Now, we have to go to the advanced DNS, and here you can see there are some default entries. We are not going to set up any web server for this tutorial, so we can just go to the mail settings here, and you can see there is an option to select custom MX. This is what we need. This is the MX record where you put your host, value, priority, and the TTL information to set up your mail extender record. It's not recommended to directly put an IP address for the mail extender record. Some mail server uh, consider it to be a bad practice. So we will go ahead and create an air record that points mail to mail to the IP address of our server, which is this. So we will put in there. So the A record is the address record. I can probably create another video talking about just the DNS stuff, but for now we'll just stick to the basics here. The A record is the um, record that points a subdomain to an IP address. So when you say mail, it's actually mail.tripaba.com and that points to this IP address. You can set the DTL to default or you can set it to whatever number you like. I'll just leave it at automatic for this. We can get rid of this record. Okay, so the A record is created. Mail points to this address. Now we go to the custom Amex. Here the host is set to at because we want the Amex record to work for the entire domain. So this at means the domain. Now this points back to the mail. So here's one thing with Namecheap though. Um, in my previous occasions and my experience, it looks like the Namecheap control panel does not append the d domain into your value here, at least on this. I know it does append here but in the air records, but not in the mail settings section. So you have to do tripaba.com. Otherwise, you might run into issues like the mail loops back to myself in your mail server log, and you will have to fix this here. The priority defines which mail server is the master or the, you know, this defines the priority if you have multiple mail servers. In this case, we just have one server, so it doesn't really matter. Save all changes. And that should be it for our DNS settings. Let's go back to our server. Oops, it was waiting for us. Now this is asking us if you we would like to use the firewall settings except with the iron mail package. And it says that it also enables SSH with port 22. Port 22 is the default port for SSH. Unless you have changed the SSH to a non-default port, it should be okay to accept that. Um, firewall rules. Even if you have changed it, it will ask you if you want to restart firewall now. It, you know, if you have changed the SSH uh, port to non-default port, you can just say no here and then go ahead and update the firewall rule with the new port and then uh, start the firewall.
we just did. Next option, it asks us to use, you know, see if we want to use the MySQL configuration set with the Iron Mail. Let's go ahead and do that. Now it's downloading the CLAM antivirus database. Um, one thing I will tell you is if you just Google CLAM AV virus detection rates, I haven't seen a lot of, you know, good stuff around that. And, you know, considering that we have a $5 server, it may be best to disable CLAM AV for this mail server. I will leave that up to you. And the CLAM antivirus may not properly work with the 1 gig of RAM. Anyways, um, I think it runs into some kind of problem when it's starting up. Your mail server will still run fine, but you'll just see some errors in the mail log. Now you can see that after installation is complete, it will give us the information about different URLs of installed web applications. This is the Roundcube webmail where you can access and log into your mail accounts. This is the admin panel, the slash iron admin. It also gives you the credentials, the postmaster account, which is the administrative account. And then there's another file here that has the all the credential information, so make sure to secure those. Now that's it for the installation. Uh, it's asking us to reboot the mail server for enabling in order to enable all the mail services. Before that, I'll show you how we may be able to disable CLAM antivirus on this box. Let's go to Amavis D. Sorry, Etsy Amavis D. D. Amavis D. Dot conf. Here, you can just enable this to one, and that's the I pass virus checks map. Save it. Now we should just be able to disable the ClamD service system CTL. Disable ClamD at MavisD is a service, I believe. Yep. Now let's go ahead and reboot the box. The server should have rebooted by now. Check that. Okay. Now we should be able to log into our administrative panel and create accounts. So the administrative panel is at mail.tripaba.com slash IRED admin for this example. And you are presented with this, your connection is not private screen. This is because the certificate is self-signed. Um, we'll go ahead and trust this. We can see this login screen. This is the login screen to manage your mail domains and accounts. So we'll log in with the postmaster at chupava.com account and the password that we configured. Okay, so there we are. This is the admin panel for the IRED, IRED mail. As you can see here, this is the system information. It's the information about the system, the load, and the network information. Here's the domain and account section. Here's the admins, the system, and the option to add different things. We are not going to talk about the upgrade pro addition here. Just the domain and accounts will see the domains. This is our domain that we created during the installation, and we know that there is one user here, which is a Postmaster account. Admins, you can create admins for your mail server. The global admin is the admin for the entire server. And there, you can also create domain admins as well for you know single domains. You can view the logs here, and let's go and add a user. Let's say Ahmed at Tripaba.com. I'll set a password here. I'll say Ahmed Tripaba, and mailbox coda. You can set it up to anything you like. I'll just leave it, and that means unlimited. Okay, the user is created. So here we can see that the new user we created is here with the animated quota. Now we can go ahead and log into our slash mail URL, which also presents us with the self-signed certificate. But because we already accepted here, it's just logged in. When I refresh the page, let me go ahead and log in there. This is our inbox. Cool, nice webmail. Now, 
The next step, we are going to check outbound and inbound emails. Now let's go ahead and test our inbound and outbound emails. Let me send one email out external. Test email outbound. Testing outbound email. Send it. Message sent. I will also go ahead and send an email externally to this email address from my email account. Just so you know, Irid Mail enables query listing by default. So it can delay your incoming emails up to 15 minutes depending on whether or not the mail server has sent an email in the past. So if it does not recognize an email server, it'll send a temporary reject and then the mail server will try again later and then it'll accept it later on. For this example, I'm just going to disable the gray listing completely so we don't have to wait for the incoming and outgoing emails. Gray listing, just remove this from here. There you go, save it. And system CTL restart hired APD. Now the gray listing is disabled. Now we can go ahead and test an inbound email. So I just went ahead and sent an email and we can see the email right away. So this is an incoming email from my mail server amit at amitnepal.com. So you can see that the incoming email now works. Also the outbound email I've already received on my mail account. I am going to reply that so we can see it here. Go sent and we should see that email. So up here shortly, press it. And we can see that this is the original email that was sent to my email account and this email has been received. So you can see it's not that difficult to build an email server and you can have your own personal email server for as much as $5 a month. I hope this video is useful. If it is, please like, share and subscribe and stay tuned until my next video.